I'd like to introduce now Lori Slepian, who is a founder, a board member, a past staff member, leadership advisor, and on and on. I've been asked to tell you something about my vision. This vision and understanding came to me as I facilitated a research group of fairly new mothers that was put together by my mentor and colleague, Patsy Torini. This was way back in December of 1973, 35 years ago. And I have been following that vision ever since. I was an active femi feminist back then, an advocate of the enlightening, empowering, and enabling work of the women's liberation consciousness raising groups. These groups were life-changing for many of us back then, as mother centers groups are now. The media laughed at feminism, and the men were not too supportive either. They were afraid, afraid of the changes in society and afraid of the changes in women that we were active, actively advocating for. Many women were afraid too. These changes threatened the lifestyle of many women. So many women were so dependent on the, whatever stability they thought they had and needed. To secure a home and an income for their families meant keeping husbands happy, meant protecting themselves by not joining the feminist movement. In this new group of mothers, I saw resistances and protections like this dissolve. I realized then that I could bring women together around mothering and not have to address the feminist, non-feminist divide. In these research groups, mothers were able to understand the complexity of becoming and being mothers they began to really understand the anguish and ambivalence involved in motherhood. They told the truth to each other. They began to understand what was needed for their own development as well as for their children and family's development and for the happiness. They no longer felt that the discontents and the frustrations that they had were just personal deficits. They began to look out at the inequities in society that were limiting their work, limiting their potential, and limiting their happiness. It was during my very first mother's center, my, well, there was not a mother's center. <laughs> it was during my very first mother's group, focusing on their birthing experience, that very deeply felt and profound life-changing event that I saw the very same enlightening, empowering dynamics happen just as happened in the consciousness raising groups. Women began to deeply connect with each other, began to put words and value to their mother work. They came together for mutual support and advocacy. Over the years, they decided on a mission that of advocating for a mother's center in every neighborhood. The idea came to me then, in addition to advocating for mother centers, I could try to build a mother's movement, an activist movement, a movement that would really honor a mother's personal experience of motherhood, of raising children, of building a strong and happy family. I thought I would go about trying to create an army of women raising consciousness and using their inner maternal feelings to set the world right. I thought that one of the best ways to do this was by proliferating mother centers all across the country and to create these, these in such a way that they would become an effective tool for both individual growth and revolutionary societal change. So whenever I could, I shaped the mother center culture, instilling whatever practices I thought would help, and I also thought I could make that culture self-generating. 
so that this ethical, non-judgmental, growth-promoting, activating culture would continue to exist and grow even when we, the founders, were long gone. NAMC's efforts to institutionalize a mother's right to a neighborhood mother center in our country so far has been slowed by societal constraints. Fortunately, NAMC has found new innovative ways to bring mothers together, ways that still bring this very special mother center culture to the women. This culture is able to change the way we relate to each other. The changing the way we relate to each other is a necessary ingredient in the work of fostering the optimal development of humankind and bringing about a transformed world. That's my vision. That's what I want. I feel it's our collective responsibility to work toward that. And if we don't think it can happen, it won't. So I have to convince you that it can. I believe we have a mother force within each of us. That's what I felt through my mothering experience. And that using that force individually and collectively is a way to succeed in raising up humanity. I believe that women need to lead in order to accomplish that. We must support each other as much as we can in all the efforts to bring the female essence into the work of constructing a different civilization. It's time. It's time to change the conversation. We must find a different way to live a way with more security and less violence, a way that offers women more economic opportunity, a way that supports and values the work of caregiving, a way that does make possible a more fully developed humanity. We mothers are growing stronger. We're demanding our rights as females, as citizens of this country and of the world. We do have a mother's movement. It is here. We will grow it. Over the years, many women have had visions and missions similar to mine. Some of the pioneers are here today. At this historic conference, the NAMC has brought together numerous leaders in the mother's movement. Today, we begin to really know each other, learn each other's strengths and resources, and work together to strengthen us all. Hopefully, we'll be able to create an environment, a kind of mother center environment, that will allow us to work with a commitment to each other, with openness, integrity, ethics, and trust. We'll grow this mother's movement one by one with hope in our hearts and with wisdom and with strength. We know that it'll take the best in each of us to do the best for all of us. Join with us, become NAMC members, Learn from the activists, advocate, find work to further this mother's movement. Listen to the words of Ellen Bravo, our keynote speaker today. She says, dare to imagine the world as it should be and work to make it happen, even if we don't see it all. Each change gets us closer to what we need. As Susan B. Anthony said, when the women's movement was focused on women gaining the vote, the right to vote, failure is impossible. Yet it took more than a century, or about a century, for women to gain what seems like such a no-brainer now. This mother's movement's goals will probably take as long, maybe longer. I have a hat that I forgot to bring up with me that has failure is impossible written on it. I will put it on later. <laughs> I'm gonna wear it because I believe that with a strong mother's movement, failure is impossible. There. <laughs> I'll keep my hair in place anyway. <laughs>